The Dragon Flag is one of the greatest calisthenics core exercises of all time. Today, you're going to learn optimal technique for bodyweight strength gain. Before we start, can you do a Dragon Flag? Comment below if you can do one with perfect form and hollow body. No lying on the internet, okay? <laughs> It's time to start developing full body core control, unlocking the full potential your body is capable of. Let's start by outlining the universal technique for all ability and strength levels. Setting up with a straight bar is the best choice for calisthenics transferability. Doing so allows us to take a shoulder width grip, perfect specificity for our pulling based training goals. Straight bar is the obvious choice because it's a stable surface to apply maximum force. This means our dragon flags will be easier to execute, allowing more core strength gains. Next, we want to take a look at the arms. What makes this dragon flag variation special is the straight arm engagement. Calisthenic strength skills are about straight arm scapular motion. Of course, it makes sense to integrate this where possible into our core exercises. Dynamic core training plus straight arms is a match made in heaven for bodyweight mastery. You know it and I know it. Moving down to the upper back, this is where the contact and pressure happens. You'll notice I've got soft padding underneath the upper back. Follow my lead. Being comfortable doesn't make you a wuss or weak. A setup which is non-threatening to the body is a major advantage. This means you'll be stronger and won't be inhibited by any upper back pain. This minute detail is going to have a profound impact on your strength levels. Give it a try and enjoy the difference. Pay attention now because this is a very important exercise cue. Scapular retraction and depression. Although there's no actual movement, we want to think about performing a straight arm pull down. Aggressively motion the elbows down towards the floor, aiming for the direction of your stomach. This directed cue assists in optimizing the tension into relative shoulder extension. We need to remember the latissimus dorsi on the back contributes towards core engagement, absolutely essential for drag and flag success. Continuing with global technique, we must respect full body tension. We want our torso and legs moving as one fixed unit. To do this, I'm keeping my abs and glutes engaged and tight. Tapping yourself on the stomach and ass is a nice physical reference for the level of tension required. Moving on, I feel everyone discounts the importance of leg engagement when it comes to dragon flags. Point the toes and keep the knees together, engaging quads and adductors respectively. You'll be surprised how big a difference global engagement makes. Technique optimization alone can make dragon flags significantly easier. Range of motion or dragon flag depth is determined by your strength level. The closer the feet are towards the ground, the harder the exercise becomes. An important principle is challenging yourself to go deep while still using sound exercise form. Naturally, we want to go all the way down into a horizontal dragon flag. If the lower back is arching at any point, this is a clear red flag. Lumbar extension means the intensity is too high for your body. Arching is a sign of losing anterior core engagement. We would rather train using perfect form at a range of motion, which is actually possible. Keep working hard and eventually your dragon flag will be happening closer and closer towards the ground. What's important is we need to understand the reasoning behind our effort. Here's why you should dragon flag. Isometric anti-extension core strength. Basically, improved hollow body bracing while our body fights against arching into a banana back. Today's dragon flag technique directly develops straight arm scapular strength for bodyweight training. Take a look at the front lever, a fundamental calisthenic strength skill. We're using straight arms and motioning relative shoulder extension into retraction and depression. A component of this position involves maintaining a rigid body alignment. Our straight arm drag and flag efforts will pay off with absolutely no core limitations during front levers. Drag and flag difficulty is determined by your body shape. It's important you understand this concept. Starting in a tuck is going to be easiest. As the body extends, the lever length increases, which raises the core difficulty. Choose a body shape which allows a full range of motion while also providing the right amount of challenge. Keep in mind, individual preference is huge when it comes to drag and flag training. Choose a variation and a body shape which suits your strength level and your body type. 
With our dragon flags, we have four variations from easy to hard. The negative dragon flag or eccentric is a great place to start. Why these are so effective is because of the specificity principle. We get better at the movements we train. Key muscles involved become stronger in the exact way required. A successful eccentric is using a consistent tempo from top to bottom of each rep. Doing so captures strength through the entire range of motion, which will be useful for the real thing. These are first on the list because they are ideal for those who struggle with depth or returning from the bottom. I'd argue that eccentrics have merit for anyone who's struggling with deep dragon flags. Never think that you're beyond the basics because they're highly valuable for all strength levels. Our next step is working through a full range of motion both down and up. As mentioned earlier in the video, we want to go as deep as our current strength level allows. Those watching fitness FAQs are probably pretty strong, so most of you should be able to get started with dynamic reps. Working dynamically in the conventional sense is a fun way to drag and flag. Full range of motion flags are essentially like doing a plank hold while the body moves through space. Good stuff. The benefit of dynamic reps is we get a momentary pause between reps at the top. The start of each rep is an opportunity to take a massive breath, brace, and go through the exercise with authentic intent. This dragon flag technique is your absolute fundamental and should definitely be mastered by all levels. Dragon flag extensions at end range are a brutal variation. We are quickly reaching maximum tension as we abruptly extend from a short to long lever position. Don't be surprised if you struggle with extensions when first trying. They're not easy, but your body is going to adapt pretty quickly. These are more difficult than conventional dragons because there's a rapid ramp in intensity. Also, we need to hit perfect body tension and positioning while we're already under strain, under load. End range training is excellent for targeting our natural zone of weakness. This is a demanding task, which is difficult in practice, which you're about to experience. But the hard work and extra effort involved is rewarded with dominant body control. You're going to need to choose the right depth to make this productive for multiple reps and multiple sets. Okay, the final variation towards drag and flag domination is the dreaded isometric holds. <sighs> Static drag and flags are absolutely insane because the tension is unrelenting. There is no rest between reps. The isometric becomes one rep of suffering and strength gaining goodness. We're forced to remain engaged during the entire set. It's both a mental and physical battle. Those arms must be straight while simultaneously motioning towards scapular retraction and depression. Global bracing is a must. The core needs to be tight, which includes both the torso and leg muscles being held tight the whole time. Once the previous dragon flag variations throughout range end up becoming tolerable, isometrics are a welcomed challenge. With practice, isometric dragon flags are going to become bearable and the strength transfer to general calisthenics, definitely noticeable. For a training protocol, here's a guideline to continue growing stronger with dragon flags. Eccentrics. Three sets of three to six reps is ideal for dragon flag eccentrics. We're using a slightly lower rep range due to the large time under tension. Because our reps are quite slow, we need to adjust the dosage accordingly. Full range of motion. Three sets of five to 15 reps is a good range for full range of motion dragon flags. Anything less than five and it's probably too difficult. Working beyond 15 starts becoming inefficient. Extensions. Three sets of five to 10 reps is sufficient for our extension variation. Combining control through range and a dominant end range hold is highly productive. Isometrics. Three sets of 10 to 30 seconds is a nice range for you to work within. Working towards sets of 10 seconds is going to bias higher intensity strength adaptation. On the other hand, working towards sets of 30 seconds is going to ingrain a greater core endurance adaptation. What is your favorite dragon flag variation and why? I want you to comment in the comment section because lately there's been too much lurking and not enough commenting. Join the Fitness FAQs discussion, drop a comment, and I'm interested to see what you think and why. All right, everyone, fitnessfaqs.com for the best calisthenics programs to become strong like a gymnast, look like a bodybuilder, and the mobility to move freely. Take care and see you soon on Fitness FAQs.